Final Fantasy XV, a very love it or hate it type of game. It's very divisive amongst fans. But today we're gonna talk about the extra content, specifically the multiplayer expansion named Comrades. Along the way, you create a hero, slay giant monsters with other people, and upgrade your weapons with monster parts. Sound familiar? Well, let's take a look and see just where Square Enix got their inspirations from and how they shoehorned, uh, I mean, implemented some of these new features into Final Fantasy XV. Set after the events of Final Fantasy XV, Noctis is gone and the world is basically in shambles. Monsters roam the countryside and there are only small outposts of human hunters that can stop them. And that's where you kind of come in. A valiant knight dressed in a pink duster with a rapidly expanding waistline. Looks like he had a little too many ramen cups. The character creator here is actually okay, but I can't get over how badly this runs on the PlayStation. Even in the character creator, it's, it just seems very unresponsive. Even just making your character, it takes forever to connect to the server, to customize your character, and then actually load into and start the game. Initially, I made this god-awful looking character, but I couldn't handle it, so I, I just redid it. So now I look like an aging man in the middle of a midlife crisis, and I even have all the disapproving looks from other citizens. As a member of the King's Glaive, and also as someone with amnesia, you're pretty much clueless about what's going on. You're driving down the road and you're woken by some guy, and then demons attack your car. This is largely a tutorial though, so it has pretty much no effect on anything. You're told how to attack, how to block, cast spells, and then you're shuffled off to the town where you're shown how everyone is basically living in Oh wait, actually everybody seems pretty happy. I mean, look at this guy, he seems to be doing well for himself. This is a pretty small hub, but basically what you need to know is you talk to this lady here and you accept a mission. She explains that the entire country doesn't have any power and you, being the trained warrior of light that you are, need to help restore the to save the world. Actually, I'm not even joking here. There's this power grid and you need to connect all the nodes by donating kilowatts, which you get from completing missions. Your first mission is admittedly pretty easy, but it does a good job at setting the, uh, the pace of the entire expansion, all things considered. Your goal is to kill a bunch of these elf and buffalo hybrids, and since we don't have any friends and no one seems to be playing this game, we're gonna take a few AI companions into the fray with us. While it's loading, you're put into this training area, and it's actually pretty funny because it just kind of drops you in front of a maximum level cactuar, you know, those little running cactus monsters that you see in every Final Fantasy. That's the one thing I like about Final Fantasy XV because it tries so hard to be serious, and then it'll toss in a cactuar, and you're like, oh, Square Enix, I know you're still alive in there somewhere. Fighting the buffalo monsters is just like Final Fantasy XV single player, for the most part, but this time when you're done, a boss creature appears. And in this case, it's basically a bigger version of the buffaloes. So this thing drops pretty easily, it's not too difficult. And speaking of drops, rather than carving monsters for the maps, monsters will drop food items. Now, I'm not 100% sure on how these work, but I think that you have to collect the highest star rating item that you can. There's little stars next to all the food items. Then during the post battle screen, you'll get your experience and then your group will cook a meal using everybody's food trap. Yup, those are tacos, aren't they? Those are fucking tacos. This game may call them grease monkey meat wraps. Okay, that, that name does not fit the picture at all, first of all, but those are 100% tacos and they look delicious just like all the food in this game. It's like the developers had some downtime or they got tired of improving the game. And they really, and I mean really wanted to make some good looking food. This game makes me hungry. Many of the beginning missions function in exactly the same way. There's some small monsters to kill, followed by a boss mob. There were a couple of really notable, and not in a good way, exceptions to this. In one mission, uh, I had to stop these very fast horses from reaching the end of a tunnel. Now this is fine and all, but the fucking things wouldn't aggro on me, and I had whacked them with my katana, and they just keep on strolling down this down this tunnel. Like, I couldn't catch up to them. I couldn't imagine doing this without a fast weapon. Like, the hammer? There's no way. But I'll, I'll get into that a little bit later. To make matters worse, eventually these extremely high-level goblins spawned to keep the AI busy. Now, this sucked because not only was I, like, level 7 or something at the time, but the goblins were level 28. 20 fucking 8. And they hit super hard. So I had to spend extra time killing the horses on my own while the AI would distract the goblins. Square Enix, I know you put those in there just to screw me up. Why would level 28 mobs spawn in a level 5 mission? And that's not the only time they trolled me. Oh, oh no, I'm just getting started here. Take this mission for example. Level 13, I'm currently level 8 or something, you know. I'm within 5 levels, I should be able to do this. 
you have to escort this lady in her truck down this treacherous road filled with all manner of creatures. I have two very big problems with this mission. One, the bees, man. Fuck the bees. It's so hard to hit these stupid things considering they're constantly in the air. And I don't know if I'm like doing something wrong or something, but it's just so hard to hit them. It seems like luck more than anything else. The other monster is the dog and the turtles. I could hit those easy enough. The dogs are fast, but you know, it doesn't really matter. I could hit them with my sword or my giant shuriken, but the bees, man, fuck the bees. The second thing I have a problem with is the lightning cougar appears at the end of this quest. This is a level 13 quest and there's a level 24 lightning cougar that deals absurd amounts of damage. The first time I tried this quest, this abomination quadruple carded our team. Like we were all bunched up and it killed us all in one hit. The game is lucky I didn't turn it off there. After every quest you get some experience towards your level and there are some materials that you get as well. This is similar-ish to what we know from other series. You take these mats and use them to upgrade your weapon. Every weapon can only be upgraded a certain amount of times. For example, this base can only be upgraded to level 30. The materials you upgrade it with dictate how it affects your stats. For example, when I forge shield spikes onto it, it increases this stat. What this stat is, I don't know, but I'm hopefully going to be tanky AF. You could have four weapons equipped at once and each one will passively affect your stats. I didn't realize this until a little bit later, but that really helped with the whole not dying thing because I ended up stacking damages and resistances. Each weapon can also have a healing spell and an offensive spell on it as well, but admittedly I didn't really see anybody using magic that much and I haven't unlocked any super interesting spells. I also don't have the proper stats to effectively use them, I feel like my fireball doesn't really do any damage. Unfortunately, there is no armor crafting and all the clothing that you customize your character with is cosmetic, but you can't get this bird costume, so everything is okay. Right, guys? Right? Back to the weapons, I tried out a few of them, including the katana, the shuriken, and the mace. The katana is fast and satisfying to use. The shuriken was way too weak, but at least it had some ranged attacks. And the hammer had a really nice damage output, and exactly what I was looking for, but it was the most frustrating to use because it was just so slow. I wasn't sure how to really control my attacks. I mean, there's only one button that you have to press or hold to attack. Like sometimes my character would sit there for a good four or five seconds holding in a charge attack, even though I wasn't pressing any buttons. I mean, it is Final Fantasy 15. The game is essentially just hitting or even holding this, you know, attack button square or uh, X, depending on what console you're on. Some of the other weapons are neat, but they're functionally all the same. The spear has some cool animations on it, and the shield is essentially a battering ram, which is kind of cool, to be honest, but I never really felt the need to switch to a, another weapon in-game because they're all the same. Sometimes you might want to switch if one of your weapons has elemental damage on it, or if an enemy is weak to a certain type of physical attack, but that's really the only exception. And that's really one of the major problems that I have with this this expansion pack, uh, you know, comrades, the game feels like it's on autopilot half the time. If you enjoyed Final Fantasy XV, and just for context sake, I, I did enjoy it, then odds are comrades will give you more frustration and boredom than actual fun and, and enjoyment. You know, I, I found XV's engine to be a bit too simplified for my taste, but at least the story was intriguing enough that in side quests and an open world to explore, and you know, these really interesting characters like Noctis, but that's not really the case here because Comrades is just so streamlined. There's no character development or anything. The areas don't have any hidden nooks and crannies. They're usually just small quarantine sections of the overworld with enemies. And then when you combine this with the fact that you're exclusively moving around, pressing one button to attack, and you know maybe you throw a fireball or a heal spell every once in a while, the game just becomes very shallow and one-dimensional. Despite this, I carried on playing Comrades. Everything I mentioned so far is kind of from the fairly early game, uh, like under eight hours. To be honest, this game does not have a really good first impression. I, I didn't want to keep playing because I felt like half the game is, you know, spent going through extensive load times. It sort of reminds me of Sonic 06. You talk to a guy, you have to wait for it to load. You finish talking to the guy, you have to wait for it to load again. And, you know, you can't move while the engine is doing something. The lows to get into the online mode at all are about a minute and a half, and you'll probably be waiting longer to go from town to get to a mission, but that, that's another discussion for another time. Anyway, I eventually found this one mission. It's called Robo Resurrection, 
and I'm fairly certain this is the best way to level up and quite frankly enjoy the game let me break it down for you so first of all there's always somebody playing this mission because it provides the best bang for your XP bucks so it's easy to party up and you're put in this arena with two big robots that you have to kill and there's all these little ice bomb guys as soon as you kill the robots the mission is over but the annoying part is the ice bombs that are constantly attacking you and draining your health to uh, counter this I started stacking ice resistance on one of my weapons to negate some of the damage and now it's easy as pie and it's much easier to level up and I ended up doing this mission for actually a few hours to get some levels under my belt and try to play more of the game unlock more costumes weapons nodes etc as you connect these nodes and distribute your kilowatts you'll open up more nodes and levels and hunts and you know towns and whatnot your goal is to supply power to the main four towns or stations at first and you'll quickly realize that it's very very grindy to get this far Getting to the first station or two is okay, but it feels like the experience required is inversely proportional to how fast you level up and how many kilowatts you need per mission. At this point, I'm thinking like, oh, Jesus Christ, I need 30 plus thousand kilowatts to unlock this one particular pathway. Comrades is just insanely grindy, but it's not really a good grind like Monster Hunter or other titles like that. The only thing you have to look forward to is upgrading your weapons, and even then, you know, you can only upgrade them so far. I guess the main draw is the fact that you have four of these weapons, so you could sort of build a set, and, you know, I use that term loosely, with specific stat boosts and whatnot, but uh, I, I don't know. To me, this it just doesn't justify the grind, because the only difference you see is slightly bigger or slightly lesser numbers. But, you know, it's kind of funny. The more I played the game, the more things I discovered about it that weren't necessarily easy to find. For example, I unlocked a whole bunch of new clothing at the vendor, including that fucking bird suit from earlier. There's even a chocobo costume that requires specific items to unlock, but I know I'm never going to get those materials. After I hit about level 18, I found that the game got a lot more enjoyable, probably because I didn't die as fast. You'll need to finish certain urgent missions to unlock specific pathways on the node map, and there were a few missions where I was actually enjoying myself. For example, there's this one where you're thrown into a swamp and you have to kill those giant, uh, I don't even know what they're called, those giant green things with the tentacles in the mouth. They're in like every single Final Fantasy. You have to kill a whole bunch of those. It, the sense of scale in that mission was really awesome because the creatures were massive and the effects were beautiful. The only caveat is that I only encountered these more interesting missions and enemy designs after putting a significant amount of time into Comrades. Because, you know, the beginning of the game was just so much slower and it was so boring. However, the missions like this are few and far between. There's not much of an incentive to keep playing through the same mission over and over and over. There's just such an imbalance between the most effective way to level up. Like, you could either enjoy yourself and level up very, very slowly and feel like you wasted your time, or you could play the same mission like Robo Resurrection over and over and over again. And if you want to play with your friends, yeah, well, good luck, because that process is mind-numbingly frustrating for all the wrong reasons. You can invite your friends to play, but it only lasts for one mission, so you have to go through all the menus and the load times multiple times in order to play with your friends. It's hard enough just to join another room as well, because, you know, the random connection errors and the fact that the menus are just so slow. Well, this has certainly been an adventure and probably this has gone on a bit too long if i'm honest i i feel like i've covered everything that i wanted to though uh keep in mind that this is just my two cents towards this game this is just my experience square enix did provide me with a code for final fantasy 15 comrades uh, and i put probably about 15 hours into it i certainly didn't finish the entire game i didn't do nearly as much to finish the entire game i just didn't feel like it was worth it but i felt like i played enough that uh you know i I can form a, a proper opinion on it. I'm just trying to have a good time. In the end, I feel like Comrades misses the mark on how to properly add multiplayer into the Final Fantasy 15 engine. It's not easy enough to play with friends, the missions are very frustrating and repetitive, the game has a very unstable frame rate and very grindy gameplay. I mean, don't get me wrong, there are moments that can be fun, but it's, it's, it's few and far between. In my opinion, this is a shoehorned game mode that is just too shallow to be worth your time. If you want a hunting game that features Final Fantasy characters and mechanics, Square Enix's first attempt, Final Fantasy Explorers on the 3DS, is much more entertaining. 
Thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure you leave your thoughts on Final Fantasy XV Comrades below if you've played it, that is. If you enjoyed this, also leave a comment. Maybe think about hitting that subscribe button. And also, if you're a subscriber or if you're a new subscriber or whatever, YouTube has really been acting up with regards to notifications, so you might want to hit that notification bell if you want to see more from me. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you all later. Peace!